Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, sorry I haven't been around lately. I kind of took a break from everything. You know, I put a lot on my plate in a very short period of time. And I was kind of trying to catch back up with myself and with all the stuff that I am trying to do. You know, I have this podcast, which I catch up with all the stuff I'm trying to do. I have this podcast, which I would like to get back up and up to speed with, try to do more of it. I have um, my other podcast pages, which is uh, where I like to tell my short stories that are all written by me. If you haven't checked that out yet, it would be greatly appreciated if you did. Um, That's coming back uh, early December. It's just like I said, I took a bit of a break from everything. Um, I also have a YouTube channel where I do something similar to what I do here. It's just that this is... um, kind of a singular opinionated thing where I like to talk about one subject and I don't like, there really isn't any editing. This is kind of a one off kind of thing. I just stand here and talk about something that I just recently saw for as long as I can. So more YouTube videos will come up. Uh, If you would like, you can check that out. It's called If Flicks Could Talk. So if you haven't checked that out yet, it would be greatly appreciated if you did. That's also coming back early December, same with Pages. And so I figured, um, I mean, I really don't know what else to say. As you can see from the title, what this is going to be about, uh, it's actually, um, very tough for me to talk. Um, so I'm kind of just going to start from the beginning in a way, but what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the Supernatural, uh, series finale. And that premiered last night. I am recording this the day after. Uh, So this is all of my very, very initial emotions. Maybe it'll change over the course of time. I don't know. Um, But I will say that after watching it maybe three more times today, because it's just, it's a bit unbelievable. So I will discuss my feelings about it in a second. Um, What I do want to say, though, is that if you are listening and you clicked on it because you saw the title and you knew what it was going to be about... There are spoilers ahead. I will be talking heavily about it. So if you ever considered watching it and haven't caught up yet, or if you haven't watched it yet, please don't listen to this. I do not want to ruin it for you. I love this show, and the last thing I would want to do is ruin it for somebody else experiencing this show, and I'll explain that in a second. So first off, I remember when the show premiered in 2005, and I was in high school, and... It was weird to me because it was just this random show that was going on, you know, one of the basic networks, you know, like it was the, the, the five big national channels. You know, I was I born and raised in New York. It was premiering on the WB and that was one of the random channels that you get when you don't when you when you live in a household that can't afford cable and all you do is watch movies you rent from the video store You know, you watch, you know, basic television, which is channels uh, four, channels five, channel seven, channel nine and channel 11, the big five. Anybody who who, um, grew up, I mean, you could also say PBS, but I mean, you really stop watching that after like eight, (laughs) maybe. But um, yeah, anybody who was who grew up in that era, they know uh, the big five that I just mentioned. You know, channel four was NBC, channel five is Fox, channel seven is ABC, channel nine is UPN, and uh, channel eleven is um, it used to be uh, the WB or the WB eleven, some variation of that. And then over the last couple of years, it changed itself to CW, but. In 2005, the show premiered, and it was just, you know, any other random show that they were premiering on one of these stations. Uh, I remember I watched it on and off that first year, and again, I was in high school, you know, TV wasn't my thing. I was always out and about doing my thing, or riding my bike around the neighborhood, you know, just being, being a teenager, you know, and... Through the courses of listening, through the courses of watching here and there, I eventually did lead up to the end of that season. And for those who are big fans of it, like, you know how the first season ends. And when you are like, it's definitely an ending that's kind of ahead of its time, because if you did that with any other show, like, I doubt very few people would ever come back. Because it's such a crazy way to say, oh, here's 25 episodes of this family searching for the father. Oh, they find the father. Uh, Boom, they're dead. Like, what? 
What are you talking about? What do you mean you killed? The, how are you going to come back from this? And of course they did. And they do every year, every new season. They always had a way where somebody would die. Somebody would come back. And I remember, I don't remember where I saw it or where I read it. But I believe Eric Kripke said somewhere in an interview that he only wrote, when he initially got the green light for the show, he only wrote up to like season three or maybe season five or something. But like that was it. It was only supposed to be like a short run kind of series. And then it was supposed to go. But people loved it. And it was hugely popular. And I didn't really get that back then. So after that first season, I was kind of like, this is dumb. I'm not going to watch it anymore. Years pass, um, I'm in my early 20s, maybe mid-20s, I have a Netflix account like everybody else, and at that time, um, what was I, I was just in this binge mode, where it's like I would get home from work, whatever show I could find on Netflix, you binge it, you know, this is like 20... Uh, 2012, 2013, something around then. Like you just, you just binge whatever you could find and you just watch whatever's available to you. So I believe, uh, my math might be wrong on this. No, I think it was more around like 2015 maybe, because I remember the show was starting season 12 or was going to go into season 12 and seasons one to ten were on Netflix already. So I was like, this is a show that's still running. It's got ten seasons on Netflix. Let me just binge this. Let me binge Supernatural. Let me give it another shot. So I started it. I finished all ten seasons within, I don't know, a week, two weeks maybe. Like, it was so long ago. And I just remember it just not being able to stop. It was just one after another after another. And it was just so, it was such good storytelling. And it was so nice to see the way that they portrayed all the different aspects of what the show is about. You know, how it's about ghosts, how it's about um, mythology, how it's about demons. And then even when it became about angels, I remember being shocked when they incorporated angels. I was like, I didn't think they would ever go near that. Because, of course, we all know that when you do, when you go anywhere near certain religious aspects, you got to be prepared for some kind of backlash. So when they incorporated angels, I immediately thought that that was going to be it. This show's done. Like, they're going to get canceled. They're going to be shunned by all the anybody who believes that how dare you portray angels or whatever but the thing was they did angels very well and they did heaven very well they did hell very well and they just they kept rolling with everything and it was always something new to come up with it was always something different that they could pull out of some lore or some bible some religious text that they can pull something out and create a story around it and yeah some there are some things that you wish got more like i remember the one episode where they go to the hotel and it's like all of the gods of like um, Egyptian mythology and uh, Buddhist mythology and Muslim mythology, you know, and and Greek mythology. And it's all of the main gods all in like one dining room. And then here comes, you know, um, Lucifer and he kills them all. And it's like you could have done so much more with them. But, you know, I mean, I guess you, you, it's a plot device to kind of make Lucifer look more badass than what you could possibly think he would have done beforehand. Like, oh, here he is killing every other god imaginable, so he's got to be taken seriously. Uh, but, yeah, you, they always were able to just pull something, and they just kept pulling and pulling and pulling. And it was just, it was endless. And every time something new came up, it's like, like, wow, I can't believe they hadn't done that yet. And you forget about it, too. Like, when they incorporated Cain and the mark of Cain, it's like, oh, that's right, Cain. That makes so much sense. And every new step was just the right step in the right direction. And, you know, some may argue whether or not certain storylines were good or bad, but I just, I appreciate all of them because I felt like all of them had so much to give. And then they incorporated God, and their perception of God was done so well that it's definitely one of those things where it's like, oh, nobody can come after them for that, because it's not the matter of God like we see God, the matter of how God is the idea of light and creation, and he has a sister, sort of, and that's the darkness, but the darkness is actually just the exact opposite of the light, and it's that balance, and it's just like that meaning of there being balance in the universe and the first things to exist was the epitomate representation 
of that dark and light balance, good and evil balance, creation and destruction. And that's just, that's so smart. That's so smart that they're able to touch base on that and, of course, not piss anybody off. So we fast forward. I binge all those seasons. Then I start watching 11 as it's kind of airing, and I'm like, okay, now I have to wait months for 12. And I fall off the horse, and I hadn't watched it in about a year or so, so I had missed 12 and 13. And so my wife, she was never a fan of it. Um, She just never really gave it a chance. So one of the things that I also don't like, which is probably something that would be surprising to most people, is Harry Potter. Not the biggest Harry Potter fan. Not something that I really enjoy to the full extent that other people do. I do understand more. I have seen the films now to understand why people do like it and why it has you know the following it has. You know, I do appreciate it. It's just not my thing. You know, it's just it's not for everybody. But me and my wife, we had a little wager at some point, and I forget how it came up. It was like, oh, how come you've never seen you know Harry Potter? You gotta watch Harry Potter. And I'm like, I'd rather watch you know blah 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 and. I had always told her, because we're very much into th- the supernatural kind of-esque world, you know, we like we like Greek mythology, we, you know, she's she uh, she's a Wiccan, you know, so she, she follows, like, paganistic kind of, um, as her religion, paganistic things as her religion, and, you know, we love horror movies, so it's always, like, werewolves and vampires and stuff like that, and I'm like, babe, you know what, I mean, why have you never seen Supernatural? And she's like, oh, I'm never going to watch that show. It's just a dumb CW show and blah, blah, blah. And one day we just came out with it. I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll make you a deal. Every movie I give you for the Harry Potter series, you have to give me one season of Supernatural. And that's what we did. We watched every Harry Potter movie. And after every Harry Potter movie, we watched one season of Supernatural. It got to the point where I think we got up to the fifth Harry Potter movie. And by that time, we're up to like the fifth or sixth season in Supernatural. And she's digging it. Like she's already kind of like into it and like ready to go like all the way. And then we just kind of stopped Harry Potter. And then we just, bam, ran right through um, uh, Supernatural. And it's just one season after another, after another, and she's loving it. And I'm like, I told you you would love it. You just had to give it a chance. And we go all the way up to season 13, and then we watch season 14 live. We're watching kind of season 14 as season 14 is sort of happening. And then we get hit with the big news. And of course, this is how it would happen. The year that I could finally get my wife to watch this show that I have loved for years beforehand is coming to an end. And I remember when they announced it, I was like, I can't believe that because this is like one of those shows that's like you always thought that there was going to be this show on the CW. You know, it's just you always thought it was going to keep going and going and going. But, you know, as you watch the seasons, you you get to understand that they they run out of things. You know, they can't they can't redo any of the storylines because that just wouldn't make sense. And that wouldn't be something the fans would want to see. Like they've done so much already with these characters and with the universe that they've built, that it makes sense that it eventually will come to an end. So we heard when we heard about that, we had finally caught up, and we got all the way up to the end of season 14, and it was right before season 15 had, had was about to start. And my wife's like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. We can't do this. So I'm like, you know what? I agree, because I don't think I'm ready for this either. And you got to understand, like, I do love this show. Like, this show is, like one of my favorites of all time definitely like a top five you know it definitely goes like um heroes house supernatural whatever else i can kind of think of off the top of my head but those are like the three main ones i can think of that i can binge from front to back no matter what now so we didn't go near it it was kind of like the pandemic was at its peak almost and things were going crazy you know like i was in between jobs she was starting to move to being remote and it was just this crazy time in everybody's life and it just kind of supernatural kind of just fell like to the to the waistline almost and it was a bit upsetting at the moment but they eventually stopped showing episodes and said we can't come back because we can't finish the filming they're like okay so they're on break we'll go on break we won't start it yet no matter what so we hadn't started season 15 up until about 
the beginning of November. I want to say right after November hit, they had just come back. And I told her, I said, babe, like they're about to show like they're up to the last three episodes. It's like the beginning of November. Like they're up to the last three episodes. We have to start catching up because I want to be ready when the season finale comes. I want to watch it live. And she was like, okay, let's do it. Like, I am I don't think I'm ready, but let's do it. And I'm like, I don't think I'm ready, but we're going to do it. So we start it and we start to see what they're doing. And it's, you know, it, it has its ups and downs, you know, like there are certain things you could say, oh, I wish this didn't happen. I wish this was done differently, but it's not like it's bad. You know what I mean? Like Rowena becoming the queen of hell. That was pretty cool. I like that. That makes a little bit of sense. Um catches death i kind of wish that was a little different but understandable bring him in give him closure you know if that works that works um the role that chuck plays through all of it the role that jack plays through all of it and it's just you know despite having its ups and downs it's definitely you know the season that kind of closed out the one main story that i feel like people kind of forget and one of the thing was that i when i was watching the episode last night it was one of these things where people are kind of turned off from the baseline of what this this season was about particularly and what we learned was that at the end of season 14 is that chuck has kind of forced sam and dean into every one of these stories that we saw prior so everything that they've ever gone through whether it was when dean was supposed to be michael and sam was supposed to be lucifer whether it was the mark of cain taking over dean whether it was that whole season where dean's trying to find a way to get out of the deal to give his soul to hell and then he spends you know a year in hell or whatever like all of those things that they went through it wasn't even a matter of choice. It was a matter of it was a story that was written by Chuck and Chuck forced them to do those things. It's the, it's the concept that they didn't have their own independence, their own free will. So this season, it was really based on the idea of getting that free will back and getting it where they can actually kind of get their revenge on the person who put them through all that. So it, it, it's, it's understanding that they were out they were not in control they were not in control of who they were because it was all just stuff that they were meant to do stuff that they were forced to do because it was all the story it was all the story's fault well not fault but like it was the story that kind of drove them in that direction so that's all this season was it was about getting that freedom it was about releasing themselves from that chain that chucks had on them to always be the story the main characters of his story and one of my favorite episodes this season is the one where they start losing their luck and they go to the bar where they have to play pool to get the good luck charm because they started turning into normal people and that makes sense it's like you really think about it like if you would do nothing but eat fucking cheeseburgers every day of your life if you do nothing but not take care of yourself eventually that's going to catch up with you but it never did for them so it was kind of shining a light that oh god doesn't care about you two anymore so he's not giving you that kind of like push forward to be continuously going he doesn't care you've lost everything that you had before because chuck just said that's it i'm done this is the end of the story and they eventually got their luck back so things were looking up for them and then they can move forward and finish the story but that's just a shining light on how how involved chuck was and who they were as people and I think that episode really emphasizes on what the ending of the show really has. It's real meaning. It's real symbolism. And that episode is the best comparison I can think of to really dish out what that meaning is. And that meaning is just the idea of having the free will, the freedom of knowing that there, that there is no other story. There is no other force pushing us forward. And... Oh, man, I'm probably going to get a bit emotional because, like I said, I've watched this thing four times today, and every time I have no problem admitting I'm crying like a bitch. So, um, leading them all the way up to this final confrontation that was the episode before, uh, episode 19. And that ending, it, it, the show could have ended there, but it really was that kind of... That, 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 that kind of peak where you finally have the person who is doing you so wrong. You have them in a corner and you win. 
You win. They won. They beat Dean Sam and Dean Winchester beat God. If that doesn't look good on a resume for a hunter, I don't know what else does. Granted, he's also punched out Hitler. Granted, he's also killed Lucifer. And one of my favorite things is when they sit there and they go, oh, what's going on with you guys? Oh, yeah, we got to fight God. And they're like, like the God, the the God is after you, too. And they're like, yeah, you know, there's another day in the office. And it's, it's just they 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 won. They won. And I know that there were a lot of speculations on how the show was finally going to end. And you would have thought that they couldn't have beaten God. But they did. And they did it in a way that made sense. So now, if you think about it, Jack is technically the new almighty being. Because he also says that he has the darkness inside of him. So he is the balanced force to bring back the balance to the rest of the world. Hence why he sets all the people free again. All the people in the world are back. Um, hence why, you know, he goes to heaven and he revamps heaven, you know, and we already know that hell's revamped. We saw that with Rowena. When Rowena went down and became the queen of hell, she basically has hell under control. So not only are the demons under control, but now the angels are under control. So what else could there possibly be on earth that would be of a detrimental thing that the deans that the winchesters need to be there for like there are no other obstacles heaven and hell are at a perfect balance at this very moment and then you got to look at everything else like the whole premise of this final episode is that they go after vampires because there are still the little monsters they'll still be shapeshifters they'll still be wendigos they'll still be vampires you know, all these other monsters still exist but there's no demons and there's no angels pushing them forwards there's no more um uh crossroads any of that stuff there's no more selling your soul or any of that stuff it's just it's the idea that there is such a balance in the world that when it finally comes down to that final moment where, you know, you have to choose between life and death, you know, it's a matter of comfortability. And it's when this when it happens, you know, and I will say one thing because I avoided Twitter while watching the show at the very end of the episode. I went on Twitter and I saw there's a lot of people, there's a lot of mixed emotions. A lot of people are mad. A lot of people are okay with it. A lot of people, they just like, one, one of the big things that really upsets me is like, oh, how could Dean get killed by a nail? It's like, take a good look. It's not a nail. It's a piece of fucking rebar. Like, it is a huge chunk of rebar. Do you know how thick rebar is? Rebar it has a diameter of about uh, maybe uh, half an inch. Uh, two, three, three quarters of an inch. That's a thick piece of rebar. And it's also got a pointed end that goes straight into a person. So there's no like stoppage almost. And that was at least six, six and a half inches. Like Dean's not a fat guy. He's a pretty slim, well-built dude. I'm almost certain that thing, if he was pressing on like his larynx where it looked like it was coming out of, he could have felt it inside his skin. That's how deep that thing penetrated him. So yeah, does it suck that he died that way? I get it. I understand. But it's not unreasonable to think that a person can die from that. It wasn't a rusty nail. It was a damn piece of rebar. And anybody could have died from something like that. Probably a lot quicker than he did, but of course we're, caught, we're talking about Supernatural, so I'm not going to sit here and say that's the thing I'm chiming on that I wish was done better. What I do appreciate about what they did and why it's different for me, why I'm not upset from this ending, is... Oh, man. It's just like... It's, it's a moment of, like, pure acceptance. It's, it's a moment of really being... For Dean, at least, it's Dean's real moment to be free and to just understand. He's understanding that, you know, this could have happened anywhere. It could have happened. It could have happened anywhere. It could have happened with anything. This was just a normal everyday case because that's all we're going to have now. We're going to have these normal cases because there's nothing else that's going on in the world that th th there's no more end of the world. There's no more end of the world. The world does not need the Winchesters anymore. And even despite that, even despite the idea that the world does not need Win the Winchesters, or at least it doesn't need Dean Winchester, it's it's Dean's, it, it's Dean realizing that it, it's his choice because every other time that that he 
was on the brink of death, or that Sam was on the brink of death. Every time one of them died, every time one of them went through something, being possessed, needing demon blood, going to hell, going to heaven, be, you know, Michael and Lucifer, all these things, they, it wasn't their choice. It wasn't something they had control over. It was all them being puppets in a grand story. And in that moment, Dean finally realizes that he has a choice. And maybe he doesn't want to die. Maybe he does actually want to be saved. Maybe he does want to try to make it through this and keep moving forward. But in that very moment, he just sits there and he goes, you know what, like, this, I don't need to. I don't need to. And nothing is forcing me to. I'm not being told by some higher power. I'm not being pushed in the direction that the story has to go in. I'm me right now, and I can make this choice on my own. And right now, I feel like I, I want to go. And I'm only going to go if my brother agrees with me, in a way. And then that's also Sam's acceptance. It's the idea that they sit there, and they're together for that one moment. And and they they didn't expect it to be the very last moment and even you didn't i remember i w i was sitting on the couch and i was like ooh that's got to hurt and then when he couldn't get off and little by little you realize that it really is that, that that's it it's really a that's it kind of moment it's even worse for the characters themselves because they're both in this accepting mindset where it's no longer about the world it's about the two of them and that's why the episode, I feel, focused a lot on just Sam and Dean, because they're, the whole show is really them. You wouldn't watch this show if it wasn't for them. The show wouldn't be the show it is if it wasn't for them. You could say what you want about Cass or um, Bobby or um, Lucifer or Crowley. You could say what you want about all these people, but they really are, you know, it's all revolving around these brothers and even just the symbolism of them saving a pair of brothers who just so happen to look like little kid versions of themselves. Like, it's big on the, the symbology. That whole scene, that whole case that they run, it's just, it's symbolizing how this is going to be what they do. And whether it happens now, or if it happens in the next one, or if it happens 10 years from now, that's always going to be the end-all be-all. And he called that in seasons ago, years ago, Dean called that. He said, we're going to go out swinging. I'm going to die on the job and I'm going to die doing what I love doing. And that's saving people. And he died saving these two brothers with his brother. And he died knowing that he can leave behind the world and the world is going to be okay. Because there'll always be monsters, but just as there will be monsters, there will always be other hunters that'll do the job just as well, if not better than he would have, you know? And I mean, I know that's kind of hard to say. You're talking about Dean Winchester. Who could do the job better than Dean Winchester? You know, it's just it's just about a matter that life moves on. And if he got old, there was going to be somebody else there, you know? If he lost both his legs, there, were going to be someone, there was going to be somebody else there. One of the scenes that um, Chuck, Chuck shows them is the two of them become monsters, the two of them actually become vampires and they get hunted by their friends. It could have led to that. Regardless of what kind of ending you wanted for this, what kind of season series, I should say, what kind of series finale you wanted for these two characters, in my opinion, it really doesn't get much better than just the realization that he's accepting that life was going to go on. This is my moment to make one of the first free choices I have. I have freedom right now in choosing that nothing else is forcing me to stay alive. Nothing else is forcing me to live. Nothing else is forcing me into being in pain and constantly fighting and constantly winning and losing. And that's a big role that every season plays is that they always lose before they make a big win. And that, that takes a toll on anybody. And that took a toll on Dean, especially because he's really... He he's the the engine that runs everything. He really is. Because he's the older brother. And it's always going to be the older brother is going to try to protect the younger brother. That's the whole... That was established in that third season where 
he die where Sam dies in that one episode when they're on like the abandoned little town, and then he goes and makes the deal with the crossroads demon and then season three is all about them trying to find a way to get dean out of the contract that just that that set the tone for what dean is going to do forever moving forward and even that part in his little speech to his brother even that scene was kind of the another form of acceptance where he's like we're going to figure this out and dean's like no do not bring me back they're we can't keep doing that. You know what happens. And if they did do that, they're just repeating the same thing that they were forced to do. And it's it's about not doing that. It's about you didn't have the choice then. You have the choice now. And right now I'm choosing to go. But I need you to say that it's okay. And yeah, a lot of people, I did feel the reminiscence as well, and a lot of people brought it up too, that it's very Endgame-esque in a way. But to me, I don't really say that's strictly an Endgame thing. I think anybody can kind of use that in a way. I get that it's always going to be the trope that that's the Endgame thing, where it's like, tell me it's okay, or it's okay, you know, you can rest now, or you can go now. But like, it really is the... It's meaningful because when you have a guy like Dean and how Dean is always going to be that fighter and Dean is always going to be the guy that he has, he has to keep pushing forward. No, he's not going to stop himself. He needs someone to stop him. And he knows he does. And his brother knows he does. And that's why in that moment, in the very last moment that they have together, where, where he asks him to tell him, that it's okay, that he can go, that, you know, he 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 doesn't need to be here anymore. Regardless of how Sam feels or how much Sam wants to save him or how much Sam needs him back or needs him in his life, it's still that, that concept of freedom. It's the concept of free choice. It's that, I've have I always wanted him back because he's my brother? Or have I always fought to bring him back because it's something I've been told to do? It's something that's forced onto me because the story that I'm in the middle of, that I'm the main character of, is driving me to do that because it ne I need to do that because I need to do that. I'm forced to do that. The, the powers that be have told me this needs to happen. Is it that? Or is, or is it just that now, in this moment, I can actually decide whether or not it's okay? And then he accepts that it's okay. And his acceptance that it's okay is him knowing that, you know what? The world is okay now. Like, that very first scene where they're sitting at the table and they're looking at their laptops and he's like, I've got nothing on the wire. Like, there's no huge traumatic things happening in the world at the moment. Everything is kind of in this real pure balance of very simple things going on who knows if even that vampire thing was a like it could have just been a, a a by chance thing that was happening you know but it's just the the whole episode was kind of just leading you up to this acknowledgement that life is normal right now you saw them doing laundry you saw him taking a run you saw him making breakfast you saw him making the bed like life is in this normal state that they're just going to keep going every day, one after another, and eventually there's going to be one case that just is going to be one of their last, if not both of their lasts. And they were accepting that that last case was this one. And he was okay with doing that. And oh, it's just very, it's very tough to talk about because... You know, I, I do want to say that I, I wish, I wish it could have ended differently. I know a lot of people say they wish it could have ended differently, but we all feel that way about like every show that ends, you know, I wasn't part of the Soprano crowd, but I know people hated that ending. I wasn't part of the Dexter crowd, but I know people hated that ending. I believe Sons of Anarchy, most people like that ending, I believe. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I usually hear pretty good things. Uh, Breaking Bad, another one that, you know, has mixed reviews when it comes to that show's ending, you know. People are always going to have mixed feelings when a show ends because you never want it to end. You want to be upset and you want to drive to making them end it better because there's you're not going to give everybody closure. Everyone's going to have a different idea of what you want the ending to be, what the ending should be. Yes, maybe these characters deserve something better than what they did get, but when you really like 
bring that bring it down to like brass tacks how much better could it be that dean dies saving people he dies leaving his brother behind to a relatively peaceful world. He dies doing what he loves doing, and he dies exactly how he says he would on his terms. It really is on his terms, because, I don't know, maybe he would have survived, maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. But in his mind, he wasn't going to, and he was okay with that. And then Sam, Sam goes on to live a life, have a kid, grow old, you know, and be... I mean, I, they didn't really go into that, whether or not he was still a hunter leading forward they did show the scene where the son has the uh, possession tattoo on him so i don't know if that was a thing if they were all hunters we didn't see who the wife was either so i i really don't know what they did with that but it's just being that they were able to meet in heaven is probably the best happy ending i guess for where where they were in the in the story and again, I get it. You, you want more. You want more closure. You want them to have happy endings. But Dean even said it like there is no happy ending for them. And we're talking about a show, and I'll, and I'll mention it again. You remember how season one ended. We're talking about a show that did that. So it's not too surprising that they end this show the way they did. And my wife brings up a good point, because we've discussed this for the majority of the day. <laughs> my wife brings up a good point that... You know, perhaps they um, they could still kind of come back from this because they exist in a world that almost everybody comes back to life. There's always a way to bring somebody back to life. But it's about why they would bring them back to life and what could be the reason behind it, what could be happening in the world, and also who's going to do it. You know, maybe the son does it at some point. I know she said that it would have been great to see them both grow old and die of old age and um see their sons kind of take it over you know being that you know the cousins winchesters instead of the brothers winchesters and that's a pretty good idea too i've heard what a lot of people wanted a lot of them just wanted to have like a happy life where you didn't know if they lived or died i do believe this was kind of a um a writer's choice where they wanted to kill them off because then there's really no reason to bring the show back you can't bring the show back after this unless you're doing a spinoff. And what would the spinoff be? Maybe the son, maybe the son, and he's still in contact with like Jody and Donna and all the other ones that are still alive. Maybe even Jody and the girls bring bring that storyline back. I would love to see. I, I I think it was last season or the season before that where it was like Jody's, you know, house of you know missing fortune girls and whatnot. Like bring all that back. I think that would be a great spinoff. I would love to watch Jody and the girls doing their thing, even with, you know, the, um, the son of Sam Winchester, you know what I'm saying? Like that I would watch, but we're, we're not going to get something like that. I don't think. And I think the only thing that could possibly happen is if they ended season, uh, episode 19, the way they ended episode 19, Maybe, like, this episode is kind of a director's ending, where it's like, here's how we want to end it. But if we ever do want to bring it back, maybe we'll just say that episode 20 isn't, like, meta, and so we'll pick it up from where season episode eight, episode 19 ends, where they beat God, Jack's the new all-loving all loving creature, and it's the two brothers, you know, taking a ride straight down um, a highway, you know, and, you know, carry on my wayward son is playing in the background. That's a good ending. Even that would have been a better ending for some people than what this episode was. And maybe they did it on like that on purpose. Maybe if they do, five years down the line, want to revisit it, they can just say, yeah, that episode... Um, we're just going to ignore that. That's another timeline. And we're going to pick it up from episode season 15, episode 19. We're going to pick it up from there. Maybe. I don't know. I can't predict the future. All I know is I am going to watch uh, Jared uh, Padalecki's new show, Walker, that it, when it premieres in January. I'm looking forward to Jensen Ackles' role in The Boys on Amazon. And I'm probably going to watch this episode at least a dozen more times this weekend and cry like a bitch every time. I'm going to keep watching it until I desensitize myself from it completely. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I do appreciate it. I hope I didn't spoil too much for you. I hope you enjoyed this kind of long episode. It's probably the longest one I ever did or ever will do, but it's well worth it and it's well deserved because I am going to miss this show. 
I am really going to miss having the show around and knowing that there is no more Supernatural is kind of heartbreaking. And it's definitely it's definitely going to be tough for me to find something that's going to kind of replace what that show kind of gave me, you know, and... I know a lot of people feel that way. You know, there's huge, it has a huge following. There's fans from all different aspects of life that have their own interpretations of what the show's about and what the characters represent on that show. And I know people are going to be upset and I know people are going to rage about this ending for years to come. But I just want us all to just be appreciative of the fact that we have the show and we have the ending that we have now. And... I just want people to appreciate like what it has been and to know that you still have this piece and you were part of this little piece of history, these 15 years, which is a long time for a show. Very few shows that aren't the Simpsons or family guy are running that long. So it's a long running show and it deserves its recognition and it deserves to be praised no matter what. And I hope it doesn't lose its flame like Game of Thrones did when that ending came along and nobody talks about the show anymore. This show is so much more than this ending. And I know there's more than enough people that are satisfied with this ending to still be able to praise the show in its entirety. And I do hope you can too. All right. Thanks guys. And I'll catch you in the next one.